The following program was made possible by a grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities. It was produced by Fairfax County Public Schools and George Mason University, Fairfax, Virginia, and by the Production Center at Arthur Young. Hello. The videotape you're about to see is called Snake Hill to Spring Bank. This is the name of a book of neighborhood history and family folklore published by Marianne Moore's 11th and 12th grade class at Groveton High School. Let me take a moment to introduce you to the Groveton area and to Marianne's class before we begin. The community that Groveton serves is just south of Alexandria, Virginia which is itself just south of Washington, D.C. Groveton's neighborhoods range all the way from trailer courts to country club homes, every variety possible. The 11th and 12th graders who were in Marion's class the year the tape was made were an average group. Some of them came from families on welfare. Some were bright, some had drug and truancy problems. Many of them spoke non-standard dialects and had an aversion to English class. Many insisted they hated writing and saw no use for it. As you'll see in a few minutes, some of these attitudes changed during the course of the student's publishing project. As you watch Marion's class at work, let me suggest that you focus on three questions to help you get the most value from the videotape. First, how does this project lead the students to value their writing and work hard at perfecting it? Second, what particular language skills, both oral and written, are the students learning? And finally, how does the project encourage the students to pay special attention to revising and editing? There's one more point to keep in mind as you watch the tape. The student publishing project you're about to see is a full-scale activity stretching over an entire semester. Many simpler and briefer versions of this project are possible, all of them based on the same ideas as Snake Hill to Spring Bank. If you're in a regular English class and you're just sitting there, you know, not everyone would be into it. Some people would be asleep, but there's no way that you could fall asleep in this class, you know. Because, I mean, it's true. I mean, you know, you really got into the book, you know, you, you just have to be involved. You, know? you work so hard all year. Most English classes, you just get a grade. This, I mean, you actually have something to show for it. It's a neat book with your name in it. And so, I mean, you really know you did something in this class. Through this English class, we also learned um, how to preserve the the spoken through the written language is which is really hard to do because um, you want people to be able to read it like you heard it. Do you think that this book is a good idea, you know, about the history? Do you think it would do? Yeah, I think it's a good idea because I think every neighborhood, uh, especially old neighborhoods, should have a history. I think it's a good idea. Could you tell me a little about West Ford? Yeah, well, uh, West Ford was my great, great grandfather. And he was a slave down at Mount Vernon. They say that he was the son of George Washington. Well, they say, my grandmother and them say that he was the son of George Washington, but the other people say he was Bushrod Washington's son. So he was the son of one of the Washingtons. Do you recall of any stories that your parents might have told you about Westford? 
Yeah, the George Washington carried him everywhere. He used to carry him to Christ Church with him when he was a boy. And he was, uh, when George Westford got married, he got married in Christ Church. What type of work did he have to do? Uh, he did a lot of repair work, like, you know, repaired plows and wheels and things like that, that type of thing. And I mostly worked like an overseer. And he was freed, you know, after George Washington's uh, death. They freed him, and he was given most of Gum Springs. A lot of it he bought on his own. So he owned practically all of Gum Spring at one time. This is the story of a classroom writing project that began with interviews like the one you're seeing now and ended with a printed book of neighborhood history and family folklore. The book is called Snake Hill to Spring Bank. Those are the names of two places in the Groveton community that appeared in many of the stories that the students collected. To prepare these stories for publication, the students transcribed the tapes of their interviews, and then they spent several weeks revising and editing what they had written. At the same time, they were also working on committees to produce and publicize the book, which they planned to sell throughout the community. Many variations are possible in this kind of publishing project. Note-taking can replace tape recording, and students and their families will value a dittoed booklet as highly as a printed one. Whatever the scope of the project, its essential elements are subject matter that the students value and appreciative readers for what they have written. The importance of these elements in the Snake Hill to Spring Bank project was evident to the students last May 31st as they waited by the baseball field in back of the school for their books to be delivered from the printers. As they were waiting, they used the time to evaluate and review their experiences, beginning with the first practice interviews they conducted with each other. You pick a partner and ask them something about their childhood, and you'd have to transcribe the little story they told you on Get tape. On to that was just practice, but it was only like a two-minute interview rather than a 30-minute interview. What's your father do? Oh, he worked construction. He, was, he worked for the plant that my grandfather owned, and we go down there. They had lakes, and we'd go down there and go fishing. Okay, how about your mother? Well, she always stayed home and cooked <laughs> and took care of us. Me and my brothers. Okay, do you remember any stories like your grandparents used to tell you? Well, my grandfather used to always tell me how when he was little and he had to walk to school when they were poor and all. What kind of changes in relations between the races have there been since your childhood? Oh, goodness. <laughs> He's the assistant principal at the school, and he came into the classroom, and we, that was the actual interview. So we sort of... Everybody watched that and sort of got the idea of how to interview. Oh, from Negro to black? Well, um, my early childhood, um, colored and Negro were the end names. And uh, when I grew up, if a black student called you black or a nigger, you went upside his head. It was a fight. Then in the 60s, People of my age and older had to accept the word black. It was, wasn't hard to accept it because we knew what the movement was about. It was just a matter of erasing the other two names out of your vocabulary. How'd you feel about it? Good. Did you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, is there, if you were going to do it again, is there anything you'd do differently? I try and make him open my, up even more because he still didn't seem like he was completely yeah. open up. How, what did you all think? Um, how did you feel about it? Did you think it went well? Well, I think it went fairly well. But one thing that, you know, you have to kind of remember, it was an interesting interview. I'm not saying that, yeah. but he tended to drift it off of things. And like, he would talk about things that really didn't have that much to do with the Groveton community. What should they have done if they wanted, um, what, what are your options if, you, um, if your narrator starts talking about something else? What should you do? Ask him another question or relate it back to what it was so that he's not drifting from the subject. Yeah, I think that's a really particularly good suggestion. What Liz is suggesting is really helpful, that as soon as you have a chance to break in, um, that you pull them in the direction that you want them to go by the way you, by the next question that you ask. I went and interviewed these um, people in the trailer park. They've been living there for 21 years or something like that. And before that, they lived in Washington. And 
the husband, he was a produce dealer during the Depression. And I asked him why would he pick a trailer park, and he said it seemed like a peaceful place. What do you think about it, Miss Saines? I think so, too. What you, what life is what you make it. You know, as long as you got your health. Right. You got that, you ain't got much. As long as you're feeling good. As long as you're feeling good, yeah. That's the main thing. <laughs> I see. Uh, do you have any special hobbies, Mr. Haynes? Well, I did have a hobby of making walking games. I got so I couldn't get out of the wood and find the wood and make them with it, so I quit it. Uh, you, you couldn't find the wood no more? No. Uh, is this one of them right here? Yeah. Yeah, that looks... How did you do that? Out of knife, just carving it? Or no, you... that's Nish that done that. I just improved on it. Oh, I see. I that. didn't, didn't improve on it. I just valorized it. Yeah. The, w the wood was already curved like this one. Yeah, the grapevine rolled down through that. Thing. Oh, that's a grapevine. Yeah. Oh, this, this is, this is, this is, right here is uh, sassafras wood. Oh, I see. And the grapevine goes down here and, 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 and it embedded itself in the... In the wood? In the wood. Yeah, I see. Did I, you sell any of the canes? No, I give them all the way away. I got three or four I keep on my own ears. Oh, I see. That, what, to your, your friends and neighbors around you? People I see need one. Yeah, I see. Hope you all live to be 75. <laughs> man, you going back to school today? Oh, I sure am. Got to get a good education. Yeah, get some knowledge, boy. Get plenty of knowledge. That's one thing you need. I just understand. The whole sense, the whole sense to go with it. Okay. And you them both, huh? <laughs> well, I'll come over and talk to y'all when the book he comes out, Mr. Haynes. Oh, so everything. I'll bring you yeah. a free copy over. Okay, some of the other interviews were with Whenever little kids. I was up, I was we, we brought them to the room after school and talked to them there. Okay, what's your favorite restaurant? McDonald's. How come? Because they have good hamburgers. Do you like going there? Yes. Do you go there a lot? Yeah. If you had a, that, that would be your first choice. If somebody said, what restaurant would you like to go to, you'd say McDonald's? Yes. Okay, what's your favorite food then? Hamburgers. Okay, what kind of games do you play? Hide and go seek. Yeah. And TV tag. How do you play TV tag? You, there's, there's some, there's a per, person it, then they gotta try and tag you, bef and you gotta get down on the ground before they tag you and say TV show. And what if you don't say TV show? Then you're it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just the basic kid, yeah. you know, make them, try to get them to just talk about you know, the community and things they like, and so we can tie the younger generation into, like, the older generation. Yeah, what are some of the problems that you have? I turn, you know, my brother knows me, and he'd give me a yes, no, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> so, if, you know, I had to talk him into it. I had to talk and explain what's going on, and then I yeah. had to, yeah, please give me longer answers, and finally I turned out with a, yeah, I turned out with, an, I turned out with an, about a 20-minute interview. It turned out pretty good. Then we transcribed. Uh, we had a lot of practicing for that. Week. We, she had a tape yeah. reading us things, and then we transcribed it. Okay. And I says to him, we could have gotten best results by not doing nothing. And he goes, you're right. Okay, and I'll go back and do it again. And I says to him, we could have gotten best results by not doing nothing. And he goes, you're right. Okay, ready again? Here we go again. And I says to him, we could have gotten best results by not doing nothing. And he goes, you're right. Has everybody got it? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Okay. It's up. What's going on in the interview? What's the she's narrator doing? She's telling a story about something that was said. Yes, she's <laughs> relating what somebody else said out loud. So what have we got to do? Use quotations. Yeah, now how can you punctuate it? Quotation marks. Okay, now what's the first, what does the I say to him? Comma. We could have got best results by doing nothing, and he goes, you're right. Good. You need a comma there. And the we is capital. Right. When we interviewed a partner, we'd had to transcribe that, which was like five minutes, and we thought that was hard, and Moore warned us that our interviews are going to be a lot longer than that and that 
it wasn't going to be easy, and it was going to be a lot of writing, and you have to have every ah, ooh, and... Yeah, you know when a person says uh-huh and mm-hmm, mm -hmm. what, uh, do you write that, do you write that down, or write yes or no? Yes. You would put down all of those sounds. The problem with not doing it at the transcribing time is that you begin to interfere with the rhythm of that person's language before you're at the editing stage. Remember the term idiolect? It's a combination of different personal dialects. That's a dialect, yes. Yeah. The idiolect is your own. Every person talks differently from every other person. They have different vocabulary, different speech patterns, different pacing, and so forth. And what you're trying to do, of course, eventually, is re recreate that as closely as you can so that your interview stands out as uh, an individual, as a personality. You're trying to portray accurately the sound and the meaning. It was Bruce A. Saunders. And, uh, I've lived here since 32. Okay, and growing up and like, you know, hangouts and things like that, could you tell me any difference in the way they were then and how they are now, the people? Well, back during that time, we didn't have too many places. Transcribing, you simply wrote every single thing that was written down, or that was said on the tape. While editing, you had to decide what was important and what wasn't important, so you'd go through this 20 or 30 page thing and try to cut it down to two or three pages. And you had to put it into paragraphs and sentences, which was hard because people don't speak in paragraphs and sentences. Sometimes you have to rearrange the what the people said from the tape to make sense. But if you put it all grammatically correct, you might lose your character's personality. And so that was kind of hard to decide what to fix and what not to fix. What are going to be the problems that we are having to solve? You're having them right now as you work on your editing. OK, what were you saying? Organization. Yeah, would you explain what you mean by that? Well, you may have something. You may be talking about one subject at the beginning of the interview, and then you go on to something else, and then maybe you come back to that subject. Like. Mm -hmm. So that your problem as an editor is how to organize. In fact, you do have exactly that problem on yours, don't you? Right. What else? Words you don't know. Sentence structure. Sentence structure. sentence structure. What's the problem? How do you know when you've got sentence structure problems? Run-ons. Yeah? Fragments. fragments. The whole mess, don't you? You've got run-ons, fragments, the whole business. Why? Because <clears throat> Because when you're talking, you just you just keep going, you know. You don't <laughs> right. have to. You, know, you, you talk, don't go you and say periods. Process, and so you don't talk while you write. OK, this is a big one. What else? Words such like gonna, gotta. Gotta, yeah. Oh, I'll tell you one that's appearing all the time is a word that looks like this. Some people are writing. What's that? Yusa, right. Which is really, of course, this. Yeah. Uh, the real problem is whether how closely we're going to stay to the sound of what they actually said. And we also have other spelling problems like names of people. Uh, we're going to have to figure out whether that Reed family name or we're going to have to uh, get somebody that knows definitely which way that name is spelled and so forth. The Prophet family that uses two F's and one T. All of these different names that we have to pick up and get accurate. People don't like to have their names misspelled. Um, let's keep going a little on the question of preserving the character. How do you know when you're reading your transcript that you have something which is telling us what the person is like? In our interview that we did with her, I mean with his uh, grandfather, Yeah. <laughs> I think, in, I didn't think he was himself, see that's just it, I don't think it, it was his. He held back a lot because I think mainly whenever we used to just talk to him, he would yeah. tell us a lot about the area, but he would more like talk about people, he would, and you know, he'd be kind of um, crude and little. But he left all of that out in the interview. It, it wasn't, it was really hard, harder than we expect. He was telling us about how so and so was known as the biggest liar. But um, <laughs> he wouldn't say very much of that on the tape. He would just you know, talk about Well, I think we're always going to have those kind of problems because people don't, they wish to be presented in their best light. Um, does anybody else have? problems on that question or any others? 
Let's go down to the non-standard usage and talk about some of those. Has anybody run into that? And if so, what are you doing? You are taking it out. Uh -huh. Why? Well, because it's only one word. It was a swear word? No, it was referring to other people. It was right, OK, it was a racial slur. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, they said nigger, right? Nigger. Yeah, OK. And why did you take it out? Oh, well, I think you well, should take it out. How many times does he say it? He only says it once. He was talking about um, why people came out here, and it says, um, what, would, what would you say the people left the city? They left, they left the, the white people left Washington in droves, and then it just, he just said they left it to the niggers. Yeah, yeah. If you took it out, if you took it out, what would you say? I would just leave out that whole thing. Well, is that important? Not really. He's just, that's his opinion why people started coming to Fairfax. Uh, you asked him, well, what was your question? I asked him why, why do you think so many people started moving into Fairfax and stuff? Oh. And why he started building here? That's the race right well, there. That's a big part of his character. If you he, take that out, still, you uh, would never know. If he thing. says it, he must want it to, you know, he must well, have he some really kind of thought that it's going to be printed. If he said it, he wouldn't have said it. Right. I mean, he knows you're interviewing <coughs> him for a book. Yeah, like, and why? Because you want to preserve character. Why take it out? I agree with you. I mean, you, you can still get his character across with, with other things he says. Right. Yeah. And by using the word, what happens? What happens People to might our, be offended. Of course. It's offensive and we all it's recognize that. Has anybody else run into a, a special word or words that you're worried about? Okay, I think you do, yeah. He does. What, he, what's, what he, he refers to you know, what other people say, like like President Truman. Mm -hmm. And he goes, he goes, well, one time I'd let him know that he really had me beat and he'd fold, you know, he's playing cards. Yes. And they, he'd say, well, Harry Truman would say, well, you SOB, I'm going to put you down to sergeant the next day. Yeah, you know? right. So if he's talking about what someone else says. Okay, that's a good point. What should he do about that? I he's actually quoting the president. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody's agreeing that he should leave that in? Yeah. yeah. It's like a sound right if he says, you, you dirty dog. Don. <laughs> My theme's going to be kind of games, and because he talked about games a lot, and he explained games and what games he played. So I'm, that's when I'm going to kind of keep, revolve everything around. Mm -hmm. And I'll move on to other things that, you know, need to stay in, like changes and stuff. But. And that's the way each one should be, shouldn't it? Yeah, I think you're right. And then she'll go on to a different subject, and then a long time later she'll mention something that relates back to this. And I'm just going to put them together and just keep it in the regular order she spoke. What I think you ought to do is to make one trip through this just on spelling. Mm -hmm. And if you like, um, I could go through like I do on your papers, and I could put a question mark out here saying, look, for, look on that line. I don't want to point it out to you specifically because I want you to get even better at spotting it. And the ones you have question marks by, I noticed when I was reading this before, are all spelled wrong, so you would write to be <laughs> suspicious. Um, but I could do the same thing for you, like for example, uh, step to spell, that's right, yeah. And so what I could do is just put a question mark out there and you could look for it and that would help you straighten it out. Would you like to do that? Would that be a help? Yeah, we kept on editing our transcripts and at the same time we all worked on book production committees to help get the actual book together. The layout committee organized what order they'd come in, what type lettering we would use, the cover design. And also by um, looking at other books we decided on how we'd put the, in the pictures and uh, the way the book would be most effective. The lady that's typing did a page for you. Oh, I yeah, see. see. Oh, that, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's, in fact, it looks better this than the is, original this one. This is the typing that we picked, isn't it? Yes, yeah, and that's, that's, that's a model page, yeah. and then this is John, the number of words. Now, eventually, we'll use fancy graph paper when we paste it up in a couple of weeks. We don't know how long the interviews are going to be at. Is this exactly how things are Well, that's one of the jobs you have. See down here, it says determine. But how can we know until they give us their interviews? Well, they're going to give you a word count. Do you have any part mission in your husband's death? Yep. Okay, and you're holding it. No. Can you cut that out? It said my husband died on our 50th anniversary, like two weeks mm -hmm. after, mm -hmm. and my neighbors were so good to me, and my kids asked me to come live with them, but I said no. And then it goes because these are the best neighbors and the best place you could ever live. 
Um, one of the things that's interesting about her, I think, though, is her devotion to this community. The fact that she's lived here most of her life and likes living here. Yeah. In a way that most of the other people we interview don't particularly, yeah. you know, they don't. Even someone like, say, um, Mrs. Entwistle, the, that um, Betty interviewed her great-grandmother, who's lived here forever, practically, she doesn't have this kind of special feeling about the place that she does. And um, it's, it's different. That's why I sort of feel like it might come. There was one place here where I wrote out to side conclusion. About, to hold for the conclusion. Yeah, because yeah. it said, um, even with the floods, I liked it here, because the floods were fun. Yeah, I remember Stuff that like she that. said I that. kept, yeah. here it is, it starts here, it says, well, I love it here, I have to have come here, and a lot of people don't, but that's their own reasons. Maybe what you're telling me that I don't remember is that there's a lot of repetition on it. Mm -hmm. In which case, you know, maybe I'm trying to get you to hold on to stuff that you've got something else. In. Okay? Yes. It looks like they fill it out there. We also studied the copyright pamphlets. Did you figure it out? Yeah. Okay. And here's a communication sheet for it. Yeah. See, we don't, we're not doing right. the sound. And um, as we was talking before about the when she would end her answers with thank the lord should i edit well should i edit that out or if you if i was reading a story about you know about them i, I don't think i'd want to hear thank the lord well, I don't know, that much too much yeah but once or twice would be okay. you know you could tell that they really are religious and stuff yeah. like that finance keeping track of the money and making sure we don't run out of money Making sure everything's cool with the money situation. Okay, what are the advantages and disadvantages of giving them ads themselves? What do you think? Of having advantages money. are book. advantages are um, if we bought four dollars, four pages for twenty-five dollars, yeah. and we sold a quarter page for ten, right? We'd we'd have we'd be a hundred and six. Or if you just sold them the right to say patrons of this book are at ten dollars a whack. You could print a whole page full. I, know, I can see that you're on the right committee, John. Publicity committee. We had a mailing list. We designed flyers, a press release, and invitations to our party. Have you both got a copy of the old press release? Yeah. We don't have to go in much detail in this, do we? Well, I mean, what's the advantage of giving specifics like the flying lessons and so forth? It makes people interested. Yeah. It does, yeah. If you say, you know, there are interviews with children, it may be not so as interesting as, do you know how to play TV tag? We've done it again. <laughs> that was the same color, but that's... Where's my name? Maybe the brown. If the picture's my I'd find my name in print. I think it's the wrong brown. I think it the is. brown was a... I knew we should have got the yellow. I knew we should have got the yellow. I knew we should have got the yellow. I told you, get the yellow. Get the yellow. I didn't vote. Hey, look at this problem. There's a mistake in mine. Great. Is it drastic? No. Where? It says, I really is. It must be, it really is. Look at this. Boy, it's nice. It's nice. It's nice. Is everyone's name in the list? No. Where's, where's the, the list? In the front the or the back? Is this your brother? Yeah. You know, if they read Vaughn, they'll know the picture. Yeah, right. Who'd you do? Who ever reads the same book? Because I opened the book and I saw, I saw part of her brains lying on the kitchen floor. Uh, <laughs> what is what this? What page is that? Oh, that's 67. Oh, that's, she never that's did regain axe. consciousness. I'd hope so. Then we went to Vaughn after that, wasn't it? Yeah. That, that was all in our chapter. It, it seemed to turn out pretty good. Thought it was okay. It could have been a lot better. You got to do a lot of different stuff. Like, we got to work with the layout. We got to work with writing. Got to interviewing and everything. So we got, like, a broad view of everything. And you learn how, indiv how history affects individuals, you know, and, and then that shows how it affects the whole country. And, it shows how people really feel, and you get to meet a lot of interesting people, and you get to learn the community. I was going to say that I think that I am a better writer, and I think that everybody else probably. I think there are so many possibilities, different kinds of things you can learn from doing something like this. Basically, I want you to learn to write better, and I want you to uh, appreciate what good writing, what the effect of it is on other people.
I think someday somebody's going to be doing some research on history and digging around the Library of Congress or something like that, and they're going to come up with these three books that, and our book particularly, and read about what people, ordinary people, like the people we talked to, were thinking about and what they were saying, and that you will have made a contribution to the history of our country in a way that nobody else could. And I hope you recognize that and feel good about it. I see. Uh, do you have any special hobbies, Mr. Haynes? Well, I did have a hobby of making walking games. I guess you know, I couldn't get out of the wood and find the wood to make them with it, so I quit it. Uh, you, you couldn't find the wood no more? No. Uh, is this one of them right here? Yeah. Yeah, that looks... How did you do that? Out of knife, just carving? Or, or no, that's Nish that done that. I just improved on it. Oh, I see. I mean, it didn't improve. I mean, I just uh, valorized it. Yeah. The, w the wood was already curved like this one. Yeah, the grapevine grows around through that. Oh, that's a grapevine. Yeah. Oh, uh, this, this is this is this is right here.